Good morning, everyone. I said this morning I was going to come to you guys and tell you guys about my dreams that I had in 2023 and how they may affect your 2024 um, year going forward. Um, in 2023, I had three dreams that were consecutive. They were spaced out in months, but they all align with one another. My first dream I had, I was at my grandmother's house, and I remember in my dream that Russian troops were assassinating Americans. They were shooting them in the head. And we were in Mississippi, and I remember telling my grandmother, I said, girl, I had a dream last night. In this dream, I saw Russian troops assassinating Americans. And she was like, oh, yeah, just pray against that. You know, we got God, you know, and everything. And I was like, yeah, you were. And so I prayed to God. And I was like, oh, my goodness. And it scared me so bad because they were literally assassinating Americans. After that dream, two, three months later, I had a dream. I remember going live on Facebook and making a status about it. But in this dream, God showed me how Russia uh, was going to knock off our satellites and invade us. What's crazy, before Hamas invaded Israel, on how they showed Hamas coming in on parachutes, is exactly what I saw in my dream on how Russia and China, because it was Russia and China in their second dream, how they came in and invaded us out of nowhere. They knocked off our satellites and we had no way of calling anyone. We had no way of communicating to no one. No one knew what was going on, but they came in and invaded us. And my last dream I had, it was around November, so about two months ago, because it's January now, 2024, so roughly around November. In that dream, I remember seeing a missile fly straight across my head. And in, and I said to myself in the dreams of the people I was talking to, I was like, oh my God, why I didn't order my stuff off Amazon when I was supposed to? And I knew all of those dreams, they played according to one another because I felt that God was warning me that something is coming. And it's time to get your house in order. And I mean spiritually, physically, and financially. Get your home in order. God is coming. This wrath that he has coming on this earth. And I will specifically say America because there, there's already a wrath that's happening on Israel. God is not playing. Do you see how those people were not prepared for war? How innocent people are being killed? I'm telling you, it's going to be worse to hear. Please get your home in order. Please get your mind together. Please get your relationship with Christ as strong as ever. Get you some Bibles, get you some notepads, get you some pens, and get into that word. Anyone that is spiritually connected to God will know that he is warning us. He is tired of the sin that America has been doing for the last century or so. He is angry. I remember my pastor saying a few months ago, uh, Pastor Herman Murray, he brought up uh, to us when he was preaching. He was like, you know, you guys need to, you know, store for water and things like that. And then also on watch night, he said, God, he could, the only thing he kept hearing was, I believe, bombs, I believe, or missiles or something like that. I can't even specifically remember what he said on watch night, but it was something in reference to what my dream that I had, that I, that I seen in 2023. And as I stated, state this is not to scare anyone, but this is for you to prepare yourself. A war could break out right now at this second. And it's millions and millions of people that don't care, that's not worried. And you see the things that those people in Israel are going through? It's going to be worse here. I'm telling you, it's going to be worse. And yep, judgment is one day is going to come. Just like, bam, that one day, everything going to be normal. And then all day, hell going to break loose, like peace and safety and sudden destruction. But I want to say Shalom. Uh, first and foremost, I want to give all praises and glory and honor that's due to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakakwadash. Um, I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of the great millstone that rule well. Peace and blessings and salutations to the hopeful like brothers, you few sisters out there that may watch. <clears throat> no in this gospel, bro, I lift up the standard of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, wherever it may be. Um, this is... Oops, this assassinating is validate, Americans. Uh, this, um, this, this Jake woman right here stated that she had a vision of Russia invading America. And clearly that is actually biblical as the brother have the scripture. And that's the spirit. I actually have the same uh, scripture pulled up here in the Blue Letter Bible. Isaiah 13, 1, 17 through 19. And the whole chapter is really good going into the evasion of Babylon the Great. 
and she made some interesting points and some very valid points. And honestly speaking, the spirit gave her that, man, you know, because what Jake knows about or thinking about Russia invasion, like out of all the, 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 the wars America has had over the years and everything that's been going on in the world, Jake don't really have a clue as to what's coming. But she made some very specific points about what's happening in the world. So, hey, people are watching, man. Okay, these church preachers, a lot of these people, they're really tuning into our videos. Quiet is kept, and they're secretly sneaking this information back to their congregation without giving uh, credit to the Hebrew Israelites. But, hey, the Lord, he doesn't miss. Okay, you all will find out that through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim and Yahweh Shai, that his men, the prophets, indeed, who you've looked down on, who you talk shit about, you will find out that we were the real men in the Lord, and the Lord is going to lay these things to your charge. And another thing too, man, believe it or not, the Lord is going to deliver people that like the scriptures say that uh, uh, your old men and your women should have visions and dream dreams. And some of these jakes, hey, the most high going to deliver them, you know, because they're validating the, the, the what the men of the Lord are saying. And the scriptures say, you know, you give a prophet a cold cup of water, you can receive a prophet's reward. And in the spiritual sense, water represents life. There's truth, there's understanding. You know, just like off the fact, I'm feeding off the spirit she's putting out there and doing a show, which is to edify the hopeful let. So, you know, hey, people that come across these videos, hey, some of these Jake's going to really repent and the Lord is going to have mercy on some of them. But a majority of you is going to be, it's going to be too late for a lot of you. When, a lot of you that claim to be Israelites, it's going to be a lot. It's going to be too late for you. This is why uh, with hopeful and humility and prayer, man, we praying that we make it. Hey, I pray that I make it because... Hey, I'll be lying to you and tell you if I said, I know I'm going to get salvation. I believe wholeheartedly. I, and I I have a, I, I know in the spirit that the Lord would deliver me. But at the same time, it's just like you just don't know. You hope. Okay, because there is humility, humility, hum, humility within those realms, man. So I pray to you, how about Shimei, how shot that he does deliver me in my own, you know, and my, my kins, my brothers, you know, the sincere men in his faith, my brothers, you know, the sincere sisters. The elders, the apostles, and hey, but um, anyway, um, this wasn't gonna be a long lesson because she made some very interesting points. Like right now, it's just me in the middle of a blizzard. Hey, you got Spetnaz troops over there in Russia, in provinces of Russia that train in weather like this. I mean, this is nothing. This is like a spring day to them. Okay, you got Spetnaz that train in literally foot two, three feet of snow, you know, uh, for war. So. Hey, it, this is nothing. What if they do an evasion right now? You, Jake's ain't ready to, <laughs> to literally get up and run and, and flee in the midst of winter. You, Jake's don't. You, Jake's hate the cold. You know that's why the Lord say, pray that your flight be not in winter because this thing is gonna come suddenly. Okay, one day everything gonna be cool. You're gonna be watching the Chiefs game. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna be eating barbecue. You're gonna be uh, going to the club, and then hey, one day, that same day, all hell just gonna break loose. You're gonna see these. These paragliders, these Black Hawk helicopters flying over your cities. The power is going to get cut. Bridges are going to get blown. People are going to be running. And you're going, before you know it, you're going to have a, a swarm of troops surrounding your cities. As the scriptures refer to them as, as the flood, man. Okay. So, uh, anyway, let's read a couple of precepts here. Nothing too long. But um, this is the book of Isaiah 13. And let's start at verses... Uh, one, it says, the burden of Babylon, which Isaiah, the son of Amos, did see. It says, lift up your banner upon you, the high mountain, okay? And the banner is the scriptures. The high mountain represents this government, okay, America, because this is a high pinnacle. This is the glory of kingdoms. And it reads, exalt the voice unto them, shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the noble. And this is why we go out to the heads of the streets every week and speak these things. In fact, um, what you... Old Testament Israelites are scared to do. We actually go out there and do what you can't do and what the Spirit of the Lord didn't put on you to do. We take up your slack and we go out there and we speak because the Lord has a spirit on us to do so. I remember a long time ago, we was getting so much slack. Oh, man, yo, y'all yo, yo going out to the streets. Y'all cruising out the way, man. Y'all ain't going to be doing that, man. What are y'all doing? They going to roll on us. Well, come on, man. The scriptures told us to go out to the streets. <laughs> you want to be Israelites within your safety and captivity? Don't you want to get up out of here? I mean, come on, man. Like, Jake, if it was up to you, Jakes, man, we would literally just be here knowing we're Israelites. And that's it. We won't ever get the kingdom. We just know we're Israelites. Smoke weed, smoke cigarettes. 
worship women, wear t-shirt fringes and long dreadlocks and patchy beards. That's all we'll be. We'll never come into preeminence. We'll never be immortal. Okay, we, we you know, it's, it's it's like we y'all on some backyard barbecue shit, you know. But it says here, uh, the gates of the nobles, the gates of the nobles, the, the elites within these cities. Okay, when we go out there and speak, hey, the elites they get whiffed with his word, and this is the reason why they're getting ready to come down with great wrath, man. Okay, and the average American, hey, they don't have a chance. It's it's gonna be bad. Brothers have been having visions and dreams. Certain brothers are having more than one dream within a day and a week. I myself been having dreams the last, I want to say like the last month or so about things that's getting ready to come to pass. So I know something is in the air, you know, apparitions are popping up, you know, and then Esau is doing psychological operations. It's going to get real, real, uh, real creepy out here in a minute, you know, but it says, I've commanded my sanctified ones and I've also called my mighty ones for my anger, even though they rejoice in my highness, man. Okay. You got the angels and then you got these, uh, these other nations in the form of military it says here uh the noise of the multitude and we and the prophets we rejoice in the highness of the lord but it says the noise of a multitude in the mountains which is a government it's like as a great people a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together this is that war okay as we're seeing now um as we always spoke and prophesied that before the mark of the beast is fully instituted these war these nations will be in a uh, heightened tensions of war to the point they are already talking about shooting nuclear missiles on one another. Okay, and I've always said, and brothers echoed the same statement, you know, that um, there will be heightened tensions before the chip comes because, you know, after the chip is promoted or passed, that's going to be the collapse of the global economies, which will push them into head world war. The tensions are already be there, so it's nothing for them to go right into war, uh, right upon the economic collapse of Babylon and Great, which is going to be a domino effect when america collapses as a super what well, is already collapsed but when the dollar is no longer uh king of the hill then all these other nations that still have dealings and foreign trades with babylon that will be pretty much the end of all these economies that uses the dollar which will cause america and their allies to start to bump they're already bumping heads with the allies now okay so once the this thing is is pretty up and running that that's the government, this is going to be the end of it. You know, this, that's going to be the heightened tension that throws the camel over the brick, so to speak. But it says here, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. And the Lord of hosts mustered the host of the battle. But they come from a far country and from the end of heaven, even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. What land is it talking about? It's talking about here in Babylon. OK, the daughter of Babylon. AKA the United States of America, which is confusion. You see? And it says here, How ye for the day of the Lord is at hand, and it should come as a destruction from the Almighty. Because this is the Lord's doing. Okay, like the young lady said in the video, she said the Lord is angry with the sin of Babylon. Okay, and the first thing her grandmother told her, which was a, <laughs> a typical Christian sentiment, I'll rebuke that and pray to God. God got us. No, God ain't got you. And for one thing, the name of the Most High, his name is not God. He has a name. Okay, his name is Yahweh. Okay, not Yah, not Yeshua, not Jehovah, but Yahweh. You know, what kills me about these Old Testament Israelites, these Yisraelite Jakes, is the fact they say Yah, Yah. And they claim to be so fluent in a Torah or the Torah, which means the law. Okay, they're so fluid in that, but yet when they read in the Hebrew, they can't seem to know that the rest of the characters goes into Yahweh. They're too stupid to realize that the Most High has another part to his name for those you, you Torah Israelites out there. Here you are reading the Hebrew in the in the Old Testament, but yeah, you can't, you're too dumb enough to realize that that says Yahweh. Okay? Yah just abbreviator. The Most High Yah. Come on, y'all. But this is why I say that, hey, you guys, man, you y'all gonna be the main ones that's catching hell out here. Because Yah ain't gonna deliver you. But anyway, it says here, uh, therefore, shall all hands be faint and every man's heart shall melt because of the fear, because the destruction is going to come upon this place suddenly while everybody is in their comforts and, you know, their uh, uh, their comforts and they're in their um, security. Then that's when the judgment of the heavenly father is going to come. And it says, and they should be afraid and pains and sorrow should take hold on them and they should be as pain as a woman that travelleth, and they should be amazed at one another and their faces should be as flames because they're going to shoot them nukes over here. Okay, when you people see that those nukes are flying and the 
the chariots of the heavenly father, which is a so-called UFO slash UAPs. When those things are not beaming you up out of here to escape that hell, then hey, you know you got a fiery fate. But death that day, that's when you're going to meet your fiery fate. And that's going to be a scary thing because a lot of brothers are going to still be here while those missiles are hidden before the chariots pick them up. But we're going to be delivered instantly, man. But we're going to see the destruction of this place. You know, because, hey, I, I picture like rain, you know, rain hits at once. But I picture that certain places going to be getting hit strategically before other places. Then before you know it, the destruction is going to pick up. It's going to one rocket. Bam. The rocks are just going to be hitting. Boom, 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 boom. Bam. Kansas City has been taken out. Chicago gone. L.A. gone. New York gone. Pennsylvania gone. Florida gone. Texas gone. I mean, it's going to be like, what in the what in the hell is going on here? And this is what you Israelites ain't understanding. You think this thing is a joke. You think it's fun and games. You think it's all about. And a lot of you are making money off this. What I realized too, you know, about that uh, that demon I did the video on. You know, find out. It's <laughs> PayPal, right? You, you got a lot of women that go to the, go to the truth. They use the truth as a come up. They use the truth as a as a gimmick to make money. They swindle you beta male simp's. And getting you under the thumb to, to to protect them and then you send them all their money. But what's so funny about it is when we get on you, Jakes, you don't see that these women that you're salivating and protecting come to, to your defense. You know, and you guys, you Israelite men, you're going to have a rude awakening, man. I can't wait to the Lord just 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 get us. I can't wait to the most high. Really, really sick it to you Israelite men, bro. Because honestly speaking, you're the problem too. The reason why these women are out of order is because your ass is out of order. You know, you worse than the damn females, man. But anyway, um, reading on, it says here, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger. It says fierce anger. Cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate. Desolate means to be totally eradicated. And he should destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of heaven and the constellation thereof should not give their light. And the sun should be darkened and is going forth and the moon should, uh, should not cause our light to shine Goes into your wisdom and understanding Because the scriptures say They're going to seek out the counsels of that day And they're not going to have an answer And also when those missiles are hitting You're not going to see the, the, the sun and the moon Because you know the thick darkness from the missiles You know it's going to be a scary day man That's all I'm going to say And I pray like hell That we're found worthy to get delivered out of this hell hole man Okay, we're literally at the end of this thing. This thing, this man is, brothers, we're getting ready to meet you. How we shy, bro? How exciting is that? You know, we've been told our lives to end, the end, the end. But honestly speaking, brothers, like most of us, we ain't no, you know, brothers, you know, younger brothers like myself, we ain't in our 40s. We're still in our 30s, you know. You got brothers in their 20s. You got older men too, like the apostles being in their 60s. But think about it. 60 years ain't a long time. You know, you come in this world, you, you know, you grow up, then you get into the truth. The Lord literally came back in your lifetime, which is a short span. You know, which proves that we've been here before because, hey, even though within our few short years on this planet, it seems like an eternity because we've been here before. Like the scripture said, there'd be many men that wish to see the things you see and hear what you hear. The prophets of old looked for the blessings and for the promises, but now we get ready to witness these things. All right. And it says here, uh, and I will punish the world for that evil and the wicked for their iniquity, and I will cause the arrogancy and the proud and arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the holiness of the terrible. All this proud pompous behavior from you Edomites, man. You Edomites are just one of a kind, man. You know, it is to the point you getting cut down. Okay, you're still proud and you still think you can lord over Jake. Like um I did a video. Um uh, I did a video other day on this, the Jake that jumped over the bench. You know, uh, uh, to beat up that judge, man. And everybody else was just like, you know, they were still justifying the Edomite, which, yeah, Jake is wicked. But at the same time, too, you Edomite, you, hey, you, you cast first blood. So what are you saying? You know? But anyway, um, moving on, it says, I would make a man more precious than fine gold. Okay, and that's an Israelite man. Even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir, because honestly speaking, when the invasion come, Hey, it says men when sh men should become women that day. So if men should become women, how much more the women? And you women are going to look for a man of the Lord. You're going to look for a man that got that glow, that's stable, okay? And that understand what the hell is going on and that knows how to move through the spirit. Them the men, them the men that you're going to seek out, okay? A lot of you women from these different groups and stuff like that, that, you know, try to rebuke us, call us, you know, just you say we hate women. We're just these type of men. 
a lot of you going to redact on them statements real soon and realize that we was actually your prophets and that, you know, we had your best interests all along. You just didn't have your best interests. But anyway, it says, therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth should remove out of our place and the wrath of the Lord of hosts and the day of his fierce anger. And it should be as a chase roe, a chase roe as a deer and as a sheep that no man take it up. And they should every man return to his own people and flee to everyone to his own land. And you're seeing that these other nations are leaving this place. But it says here that children also should be dashed into pieces before their eyes and their houses should be spoiled and their wives ravished. Right. OK, because grape is coming back in a big way. And I also uh, I wanted to I was looking at something earlier. Uh, What was I looking at? Slocky, give me one second, brothers. Shh. Hold on one second, brother. Slocky, Slocky. I was looking at something. Uh, yeah, here, here. Cast tonight. They hand us some food and this to keep us warm because it's very cold out here. This man from Guinea, West Africa, is one of the many asylum seekers in New York City now facing uncertainty as shelters are at capacity. On a night like this, that uncertainty can create a range of emotions, including fear. And you're not used to this weather, right? We are not. We are not. This is a strange environment. Earlier today, emotions were high not too far from the park in front of the former St. Bridget School, now operating as a shelter reentry center for migrants during this crisis, as limits on shelter stays were imposed by the city months ago. There are literally hundreds every day lined up around the block, all the way to the next block and around the corner. This morning, ahead of the storm and the forecast, police were called after an altercation broke out. The NYPD says two officers sustained minor injuries and two migrants are facing several charges now, including resisting arrest. See, and it's the thing, okay? They not used to this environment. Like he said, we ain't used to this damn weather. So it says, I see migrants invading your homes next and what just happened in New York is a sign. Watch, okay? So, hey, you go into the Apocrypha, it tells you that uh, they should cast them out of the houses, you know, going into the troops. But regardless of it, man, these people are going to seek asylum. They're going to seek to, to to take your goods. And, hey, because Esau is giving them a pass to come over here, hey, they got the right now, okay? They have the right to own weapons. They become cops, okay? They have tax, tax exemptions, all these things. So, literally... The very house that you pay, the mortgage you paying, hey, they going to literally be living in your spot, man. You know, playing your video games, eating your Cheetos, drinking your Crush Pops, drinking your Grey Goose, your Henny. You know what I'm saying? Putting on your sneakers, man. You know, even having the keys to your whip, probably. Because this devil enabled them to do that. So this is the times that we're in. This is why we, the Apostle Tahar named this year the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. Because it's already started. I mean, the first of the year proved that. When those uh, Jake's at that mall in Atlanta, not Atlanta, but Miami, and those alleged apparitions popped up. I say allegedly because, like I said, Esau, you know, he's a Esau's a devil, man. And literally, he can he could have been doing some astral projection type stuff. Who knows? But regardless, um, these are the times we're in. But it says Babylon will fall to the Medes, which the Medes is another way of the saying the Russians. It says, behold, I will stuff the Medes against them, which should not regard silver and as for gold. They should not delight in it. And their bows, which is those missiles, also should dash the young men into pieces, and they should have no pity on the fruit of the womb, and their eyes should not spare children. Okay, so hey, you 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 Jake's over here, man. Okay, even you Edomites, you people that's that's so proud and happy go lucky American. Oh, we that'll never happen. Hey, it's happening now. Okay, they're gonna go house to house and they're gonna start kicking in doors, and hey, if you a soft target, hey, you gotta go. Alright, hey, this is the book of Ezekiel 7. And I'm gonna start at verses. Uh, let's start at verses 15. It says, "The sword is without, and the pestilence and the famine within. And he that is in the field should die of the sword. And he that is in the city, famine and pestilence should devour him. Because a, hey, once this collapse come, you better believe shortly thereafter the famine will kick in. Because remember, we still haven't had the famine yet. That still got to transpire. So that's a lot of little micro prophecies that have to take place leading up to these bigger prophecies. But they all are gonna set. One prophecy is gonna set up the next." You know, and it says here, uh, and it says, should die with the sword, and he that is in a city, famine and pestilence, should devour him. But they that escape of them should escape, and shall be on the mountains like doves in the valleys, and all of them mourning everyone for his iniquity. This literally means you going into the wilderness, you know, going into like different places like off grid. 
but there ain't gonna be no food out there because you're gonna have a lot of inner city people that's trying to escape out of the city, trying to live off the land, but they're not gonna really know what to do because the spirit is not gonna be with these people. Okay, the spirit of the Lord will be with us. Okay, he's gonna lead us to where we need to be. And the Lord gonna set it up so cold, brothers. Like, you're gonna already be where you need to be for the most part. You know what I'm saying? Now, we ain't gonna say we ain't gonna be in the midst of the chaos because, you know, we're gonna have to navigate through it. But overall, the spirit gonna navigate you to where you need to be. Okay, it's all the provisions are already set up. You just gotta let it play out. So I tell brothers all the time, don't overthink it, just let it happen. All right, but it says, and they shall also gird themselves with sackcloth, and whore shall cover them with horror, okay? And shame should be upon all faces and baldness upon all heads, okay? So let me get this uh, here in the blue letter because I want to look up some words. Uh, yep, and it says whore shall cover them. So let's look up the word whore. Let's see what the, the Bible says about whore. Okay. Shuddering, trembling. Shuddering, trembling. All right. Uh, yep, so that's the, the meaning of it. It says, shame should be upon all faces and baldness should be upon all heads, which represents a uh, 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 mourning. You know, ancient world, they used to put like ashes of sack. Not I mean, they used to put like ashes and so forth. On their heads and their face, sometimes they shave off their hair, which is a symbol symbolizing the morning, putting on sackcloth. And they should cast their silver in the streets and their gold should be removed. The silver and the gold should not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of Yahweh. And they should not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because there ain't going to be no food here to eat. It says, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. But as the beauty of his ornament, he set in the ma majesty. But they made the images of their abominations and of their detestable things therein. Therefore, I've set it far from them. And I would give it into the hands of the strangers for a prey, meaning the shit, your idols, you know, the things you've worshipped, the things you've had held in high regard. The Lord is going to give it over to, to strangers, man. These other, these foreign nations, this is what we're seeing. Okay, like, hey, the Jake was just like, look, he went and stole, I think it was like a $5,000 pair of um, fucking uh, designer glasses. You know, and you Americans, man, you prive off the, the, the material things you have, you know, your cars, your, your your homes, your extravagant careers. All that's getting ready to be a thing in the past. You know, and it says in my face, I will also turn from them. And also talking about the temple. OK, because remember that the heathens, they ransacked the temple. Remember what happened during the time of uh, uh, the what they call the Flavian dynasty going back into Titus, the invasion of Titus and Domitian Caesars, Titus Vespasian and Domitian Caesars. OK, look at what they did in what they call 67 A.D., which is what they known as the Flavian dynasty or the Masada period. You can look up that history. But it says here, and they should pollute my secret place for the robber should enter into it and defile it. And the secret place now is the, is the Israelites. OK, it says make a chain for the land is full of bloody crimes and the city is full of violence. Wherefore, I will bring the worst of the heathen. And who is that? Okay, you the Malachites and ultimately the Russians, okay, these heathens from different world countries, you, Hem, you Hamites. It says here, and I will bring the worst of the heathen and they shall possess their houses. And we're just reading that. And it says, and I'll also make the pump of the strong, which is the power and the pride, to cease, and their holy places should be defiled. Okay, but destruction cometh, and they shall seek peace, and there should be none. But mischief should come upon mischief, and rumor should be upon rumor. Then they should seek a vision of the prophet, but the law should perish from the priest and the council from the ancient. Because, hey, we ain't going to be out there speaking these words too much longer. Okay, so, hey, get this truth while you can get it. Pray, repent, repeat. <laughs> all right. But anyway, with that, I want to give all praises and glory and honor that's due to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai. Lord's will you edify edified until the next lesson. Shalom.